We are the 2016 Formula SAE Powertrain and Body Team. My name is Ryan Sheffield. My colleagues are Gandhi Gonzalez and George Correa. Our advisor for this endeavor is Dr. Andres Tamante. Formula SAE is an international engineering competition in which students from all over the world compete with their open wheel Formula style race cars. To achieve the goal of building these race cars, we use our fundamental concepts learned in our engineering courses at FIU. We use software packages provided us to, through our sponsors for design and simulation. And we use a student machine shop to make this all become a reality from scratch. Now this is a 100% student effort driven competition. And we are a very young team. We're about four to five years old. However, there's no handicap for us. There are teams out there that are competing since the inception of this competition in the early 1980s. So that leaves a lot of work for us to do. There's not a lot of past work to model our future work. We are one of the two senior design teams that will be working on this endeavor, as Dr. Tulsi Nogu mentioned. We will be focusing on the powertrain, aerodynamics, and electronics of this vehicle, while our partnering senior design team will be working on the chassis, suspension, ergonomics, and drivetrain of the vehicle. With um, our two teams, together with the support of the FSA team, we'll be fully assembling the vehicle and having it ready by the end of the year. Our motivation for this project is really to put FIU on the spot. We want to collaborate with, uh, with um, engineering students and professionals from all over the world that will be in attendance at this competition and help um, FIU really shine at this competition. Also, we will be gaining a um, valuable hands-on experience that will help us transition from engineering students to working professionals. Our goals and tasks for this project is, as I mentioned before, to have a fully assembled and running vehicle by December 2016. The competition which we are competing in is the May 2017. Having this few month gap will allow us sufficient time for testing, troubleshooting, and driver practice to be fully prepared for the, the competition. Uh, there's a two year rotational period on the chassis of the vehicle, which means that um, basically everything that's dependent upon this chassis will have to be redesigned. We are currently at the beginning of this rotational period, and as I mentioned, our partnering senior design team will be redesigning the chassis. A point breakdown, um, or the rubric by which the judges will be judging the car can be seen in the top right over here. As you can see, the, the car will be judged on everything from aesthetics to vehicular performance to a cost analysis. And of course, we want to continue to make improvements on the vehicle year through year and improve FIU's ranking. Our Gantt chart for this project can be seen over here. Um, so thus far, we have completed the project formulation, the literature survey, and we have begun data collection on our model scale testing. So now that we've taken a look at the organization's goals, it's time to take a deeper look into our team goals. And firstly, on the scope of our work uh, includes the powertrain, particularly redesigning the cooling system. Now the current cooling system on the FSA vehicle has an oversized radiator. It has a stock radiator from the ATV from which the engine was extracted. And this is not optimal for racing. It's not optimal for our size. It's made for a different build. And therefore, we want to move away from the manufacturer components. What we're going to be doing is sizing according to the engine heat rejection of the current FSA vehicle. And this is going to have some critical states, whether it's at idle or at max velocity, where you want to take a, a, pay a closer attention to. Also, we want to develop a dual radiator system. Right now, there's only one radiator. Uh, a dual radiator system can uh, give us the same amount of cooling, but with weight savings. It can lower the center of gravity, meaning that there's better maneuvering. And lastly, uh, as my partner uh, mentioned earlier, there's aesthetics involved with the competition <coughs> itself. So we want to make sure that uh, it looks as nice as possible, and this can uh, promote a symmetry that makes it look a little nicer. As far as aerodynamics, we want to develop a new body for the chassis. Uh, the, the current one is rendered useless now because the new team is going to create a new chassis. We want to make sure that this body has a favorable drag and lift coefficient. Uh, we want to reduce drag and have a negative lift coefficient for a better downforce. And uh, also, we want to implement side pods on the side of the car. This is going to be able to duct air through the heat exchangers while reducing drag. As far as electronics, because we're making these uh, new changes, we're going to make the car more efficient. It's going to uh, uh, absorb, uh, need less power to run. So we need to accommodate it for the new changes and uh, make sure we're taking full advantage of all these changes. Uh, because this is a competition, there's obviously going to be rules and regulations from which we need to abide by. It's a, it's a crazy list, so we need to uh, truncate. And here are a few of the, the more relevant ones. Uh, the nose cone has to be, uh, the, uh, cannot exceed a certain threshold, it has to be within, within a certain sharpness. The coolant must be 100% water. Uh, that's not a bad thing, water has a high specific heat. However, uh, we need to watch out for the corrosion of the certain elements within the car. 
Also, mounted devices refers to aerodynamic accessories. So um, they cannot be mounted onto these uh, green key valve zones which you see on this image. They must be kept out of there. Also, uh, fasteners, we need to pay, pay close attention to those because we want to ensure the safety of the driver, reliability of the car, and uh, make sure that they are deemed appropriate by SAE International. Some of the fundamental theory, some of the relevant uh, theory that, that is um, involved with this is the heat exchanger uh, uses this equation, which you learn in thermodynamics, is um, the heat exchange between the incoming air and the hot coolant. And it's a function of the heat capacity of the mass flow rate and the temperature difference. And lastly, we're looking at the drag and lift coefficients, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we want to make sure that the drag coefficient is uh, low and the lift coefficient is negative. And these are uh, a function of the air density, but the air speed and also a reference distance. So in order to complete our design goals, we're going to be looking at the following design alternatives. Uh, we're going to be focusing for the cooling system on two specific studies. One is on the order of the radiators, and the other is on the inclusion of thermal coating. We know from fundamental theory that if we change the order of the radiators from either parallel to series, we're going to affect the flow rate of the coolant as well as the frictional losses that occur within the system. And we also know that with thermal coatings, we can help to either insulate or dissipate heat in specific areas. Although we understand how these work, we're not uh, entirely uh, convinced that it would be beneficial to our application specifically, and so we would like to test them before we make any final decisions. As you can see on this image here, this is a small testing bed that we've set up where we can change the order of the radiator, and we can also change the temperature of the coolant. Um, eventually, we would like to coat some of these components in order to assess the effectiveness of the thermal coating. This is something that we're currently working on and should be done with in the next couple of weeks. So for the sidepod aerodynamics, uh, sidepod alternative, we're mainly going to be focusing on some of the aerodynamics. Um, we're going to be looking at things like the radiator orientation, as well as the airfoil shape, and some of the inlet and exit configuration. Um, we're going to be doing several trace studies between these parameters in order to figure out what is the best overall configuration for us for our application. This is something that we're going to be doing through Axis in order to save money and effort. So for the body aerodynamics, we're also going to be looking at mainly, for the body alternatives, mainly going to be looking at the aerodynamics. Again, focusing on things like the nose cone design, which is the main interface between the vehicle and the fluid around it, as well as some aerodynamic components that we can add, such as the diffuser, um, splitter blades, small wings. This, again, will several trace studies between all these parameters in order to figure out what is the best configuration for us, for our application, and we're going to be using ANSYS in order to form conclusions. So in order to push FIU's global initiative, we're going to be looking at the following here, some of the following global components that we are incorporating. For example, for global awareness, we are interacting and integrating locally and internationally with a lot of our sponsors uh, that give us constant feedback on our engineering ideas and design, such as Chrysler, for example, who checks up on us every couple of weeks to see what we're doing and how we're doing it, as well as we're participating in an international competition where we get to integrate with a lot of different engineers approaching the same task and try and figure out how it is that we're all uh, managing the same goals differently. For a global perspective, we recognize that the economics of the vehicle are an important, are of significance when developing a formula vehicle. So we want to focus on using manufacturing techniques and materials that are available to us locally in order to promote FIU by using, for example, the FIU workshop and our sponsors by using their local services and reduce our economic uh, footprint. For a global engagement, we are um, we have doing a lot of work with efficiency. About 40% of the points that we are graded on in the competition are directly related to the vehicle's efficiency. Uh, the components that we are working on particularly, like resizing the cooling system, improving the, air, uh, the aerodynamic coefficients are directly related to the vehicle's efficiency. Efficiency is obviously a universal term and it's something that is important to us as a society, especially now where things like uh, global warming continue to become an issue and we need to find better ways to use our energy more effectively. So in conclusion, what we've completed so far is perform the literature studies and surveys on all of the components and sections of the vehicle that we're working on. But we've also defined specifically what it is that we're going to do in order to improve each component. Uh, we've already started the initial stages of data collection so that we can get through our design alternatives. And this is something that's going to continue to carry on through the summer, where we fight through all of the design alternatives and propose a final design before the end of summer. This will keep us on track for the following semester to come in and be ready to manufacture immediately and keep us uh, in further track to the full completion of the vehicle by December 2016, as my colleague mentioned, before the competition so that we can troubleshoot. And that uh, about concludes our presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, on this next slide here, you have some general information about our project, our names, faculty advisor, and we'd now like to open up the floor for some questions. Thank you.
me just start with that. I, I think this is a very ambitious project. Um, I think in the past we've seen any individual one of these components that you're looking at, whether it's powertrain, whether it's a cooling system, whether it's body redesign, I think we've seen those be their own projects. Um, I'd just like to say that I hope that the technical decisions being made as a result of trying to increase the scope um, aren't affected ultimately and just make sure that you're providing the justification for all of your decisions from a technical perspective still as to why why it is you're choosing something over another. Is there a reason why you have to have all three of those? Yes. Well, one reason is I can tell you is they want to finish the car design actually because we got from earlier actually advisory board uh, recommendation was that this was an ongoing project and we never produced a car and participated in a competition. So that's why we pushed them actually and they've committed to finishing the car, right? Building a prototype. That's why they had to be a little bit more ambitious, I think. And, and we have the summer to be available. Hmm? And we have the summer time. Plus we have the summer, right. They have actually inherently, they have two, three extra months to work on. And plus they have a background, a team of formula car students that really, what, 20, 25, whatever total. So they do have extra help in this case too. Uh, furthermore, I'd like to add also that we want to have a more ambitious work scope to pretty much um, advance our timeline so we've allowed more time for testing um, as, as historically to other years. We want to have a car prepped uh, months before competition to allow plenty of time for testing and practicing and publishing. But I have a few questions as far as I'm concerned. You said that you're going to compete in the uh, May 2017 competitions, and most of you are going to be doing your city design in December. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be graduating at that time also. Yes. So, uh, I mean, between December and May, are you, are you going to have that commitment to still go to the competition? Or the fact that you graduate, you'll be like, okay, I'm going to. <laughs> I think, at least. Uh, from a personal perspective, and I'm sure these guys can agree, there's going to be a certain attachment to the vehicle, so we'll probably be motivated to attend. I know that realistically that may not be the case if for whatever reason we're shipped out somewhere in the country working for a specific company, but if all possible, I know that I personally would like to attend yes, and see how the vehicle performs. Uh, additionally, I'd just like to note that the scope of this project is to fully assemble and have the vehicle running by December 2016, um, like, like Dr. Tosin Abu said. Um, you know, this is an ongoing team, so there's always uh, people that work on the car. Over at us, we're addressing having the vehicle completed and running by December 2016. Um, we will probably stay, uh, you know, around, but that's out of the project scope. Right, that's okay. what they agreed to actually at the beginning of the semester. But another question also, I know that SAE, like, they change the rules mm -hmm. year to year. Yeah. So, right now you have a design which which you're probably basing on the 2016 rules. The 2017 rules would be slightly somewhat different. I mean, how do you know you have the vehicle that you have in December 2016 when the rules come out that you have to make some changes to what you have? I mean, what's going to happen? Well, that is true that the rules will be released um, following, I think it's October ish that they come out and we are aware of any changes but historically the rules have not changed significantly significantly from competition to competition so if there are minor changes chances are they won't affect us there'll probably be a very technical section that might need some revision if that's the case because of the way we're setting up the project so that it's done with a significant amount of time we should be able to um, adjust in order to comply with those changes uh, furthermore also uh, we are, you know, assembling a whole vehicle here, so if we were to wait to the rules to be released in October, there's no way that we're going to have a vehicle completed by then. Um, so that's just how the competition has been done historically, is starting on the vehicle before even this competition, so we can be well prepared for the following competition. So you just make changes to, based on the rules, or you just, would just not compete? Um, right now, what we presented is the what we've noted on past years that we want to improve specifically. However, if later there are changes that we are mandated to make through rules, we will accommodate those. And you talk about improving FIU ranking. Uh, mm -hmm. So what's, what's the ranking going from? <coughs> what's, what's, what's the ranking? What are you going to go? What are you going to improve to? 
Well, going from where, what to what? Currently, we're on roughly around the 80, 90 uh, placing with respect to 120. This is because on the previous competition, we had a lot of complications. Uh, we hope to improve that actually within a couple of weeks. In May 9th, we're competing in the 2016 competition, and we'll see how we perform there. And uh, based on that performance, we're gonna, we hope to continue to add. It's difficult to say where exactly you decide we want to place because some teams are well established. But for the most part, I mean, the sky's the limit. So the, therefore, you have to. Therefore, if you compete in 2017, you have to improve from 2016. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully. Please, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just also like to note that. Uh, did you have something to say? Go ahead. Go ahead. I just like to note that uh, part of being a well-established team, as many other universities are, is support. Um, not only you know idea-wise, but also financially <coughs> through our company. Um, so while we are very young, we're limited on resources. However building our, our report and getting um, more more time in, in the competition has really helped us, um, such as this past, uh, the past few months we had a sponsorship through Chevron. Um, so these building up sponsorships really help and aid in, in increasing our revenue. The concern I have is there's a new chassis design that's controlled by another team. And it's a pivotal piece of input data for you to be able to Develop uh, a body and aerodynamic package. So, how are you going to manage that? Yes, um, so our partnering senior design team, which you'll see presenting after us, will present the chassis that they are, um, will be designing. However, um, like you said, this is something that we would have to be working in parallel, which we find will help us uh, you know, build us professionally as being able to work in parallel with the other team. However, uh, because that has not been finalized yet, we are have started as we showed working on the cooling system because that is very flexible in regards to the chassis, whereas we have other components such as the body that will be directly influenced and dependent upon the chassis. So your success is based on how quickly they get their job done. Right. Well, well, <laughs> well in a way, they yes, get their job but done that's how it goes. The standard time that everybody else gets their jobs done by, you're going to come down to the end and you're not going to have the ability to get yours finished. I think that's a fair statement, but ultimately, as the organization, we all sort of depend on each other. I don't think that, I mean, if they, if they fail at any point or we fail at any point, the whole group fails. So right. while I think that's a fair statement, at the same time, uh, we're all working together for the same goal and none of us are planning to fail. We have the common, the same deadline, for example, for the summer to be done with the chassis and with the body design so that we can begin manufacturing. This is something that we share in common and that we're, even though we're separate teams, we're working together on. So if at some point they fall short for whatever reason and they need help, we're obviously willing to be there and provide whatever help is necessary in order to continue to push the goal to December 2016 to be completed. Okay, thank you. And if they fail, I will kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> there is one last year during the competition, they told us that they were, they were going to release the rules right after this competition. Right. They won't, because that was one of our, the 120 teams that were, they were, we had a meeting and one of the most critical complaints was why do we have to wait until October? Mm -hmm. So right. we said, okay, next year we promise we're gonna you're gonna have the rules right after the competition. Okay. So which means that if we do have those have, rules, obviously it would be much better. Have a little time. Yeah. Correct. Uh, I have a question. In terms of the current state of the chassis, what are the changes Okay, so um, the company that we're working with is a sponsor who gave us some specifics on the materials that they're using, but they're not entirely sure of their efficiency range. So part of their sponsorship is a trade with us to provide them information on what these coatings do, and that's why before we commit fully to using them, we're gonna be testing them in order to figure out and quantify their effectiveness. So as far as what specific materials, I wouldn't be able to tell you right now, and as far as the efficiency is something that we're going to test and. Uh, quantify before we apply so that we can guarantee that the changes that we are making are beneficial. What if it's not efficient enough and you still have that connection to that sponsor? Do you still need to put it to your people? No, no. So the, the link that we have with the sponsor is in trading information. So uh, the this, this scaling, the testing that we're doing is between components that are not necessarily going to go into the vehicle, but that we're using to assess the difference between, for example, thermal coating or radiator order. Um, this is private before making actual decisions of the components that we go on the vehicle. Does that answer your question? Yeah. And also another thing. The SAE team is mm -hmm. very large. So in other words, you guys are working on a senior design project, they're working on a senior design project. 
and you have a lot of other people who are not senior design students working on it. I mean, th I know this is a very big project, but you guys are getting a lot of extra help. And how are you going to manage all of that, that it doesn't impact your deadlines? Yeah. So we do have our deadlines, and um, we are holding ourselves responsible, just as with any other team. Um, there will be input from, from uh, external help, whether it's us or whether it's another team. And so we are holding ourselves responsible to this deadline. Um, we are in the shop working ourselves. We are doing models. Our, the model, for example, is completely ourselves. So decisions like that will be based uh, solely upon ourselves. And while we may be receiving uh, some external help on other components, um, we are the sole responsibility of this project getting done. So how are you going to manage all of the extra labor force? Are you going to effectively by teams? I don't know how the dynamic work. Uh, what the team is divided into different, uh, I guess, um, how you say, yeah, different teams, however, you know, kind of like sub-teams for the specific components. However, we're also, each one of us, engaged in different um, aspects of the project. So, for example, the model radiator testing that we are currently doing, I've been taking the lead on that. I've been doing most of the work on that. George, however, has been partnering with the body team on um, um, making decisions on it. Um, we haven't quite started manufacturing, like I said, because we were waiting on the chassis. Our team has taken the lead on that. Um, our colleague, Dranzler, has been taking the lead on working with the side pods. Um, so each one of us, we are basically getting very intimate with certain parts of the project to make sure we get done. Any other questions? 